to another video and today I am going to be showing you guys how I make my thumbnails for my YouTube videos. Now so many, so many, so many of you guys have requested this video so I decided that you guys definitely wanted to see it so now I am showing you guys how I make my thumbnails. So if you are excited for this video, please be sure to leave a big thumbs up and let me know. Also be sure to comment down below if you need any help with this tutorial or if you're just excited for this video because I'm really excited to make it. Alrighty, so first of all, for the first step, I am in the program paint.net. This is a free program and if you want to download it, the link to it will be down in the description. And that's pretty much all you need to start, so let's just get started. So right here is a little template I have for thumbnails. So down in the description, I'll have a little download for a zip file that has all the resources I use to make thumbnails, just so you guys will have it. Like it'll have all the fonts and this picture and everything. So what you wanna do to get this picture, you're gonna save it to your computer. Then up here in file on the top left, you're just gonna hit file, open, and then find your picture you wanna open. So it's right here, so I just clicked it and it opened it up in my paint.net. So that is pretty much it. So on the right, I recommend in the layers right here, going down to the very bottom with the little green plus button right here and just clicking add new layer. Double click this layer and we are going to name it size and just click enter and save it. Now, on the left right here, take your little paint bucket. You can also hit F on your keyboard to get to it, I believe. It doesn't work for me, but it says it's a shortcut key, so maybe it'll work for you. So you're just gonna go down to the colors in the bottom left or wherever your color box may be and just select a color that you want. It doesn't have to be like in your thumbnail. We are just gonna paste a really bright color like red or really bright purple or green or whatever really bright color you want. This is to make sure that your thumbnail stays the same size because you're gonna be pasting stuff in that's bigger than the thumbnail if that makes sense and it'll make it bigger than it's supposed to and it won't fit. So we just made a little size layer so we can always get it back down to the right size. Now what you are going to do is go down to your little colors box. I'm gonna drag it to the center of the screen so you guys can see better. We need to decide what two colors we want to make our thumbnail. As you guys see, I kind of have like a gradient background on all my thumbnails so they match each other. So let's see, what colors do we want? It also kind of depends on what video you're doing. Like for my Christmas one, I did red and green. And for my winter one, I think I did like blues and purples. So kind of try to consider what your video is and what colors would go good with that video. But since this is going to be like a fake thumbnail, like I don't need a thumbnail right now. So I am just going to make it, let's see, I'm going to make it really light purple and I'm going to make it really, really light like teal green. So how I did that is just I clicked this box right here on top, which is now the purple one, and dragged this to find a color. Then I clicked the bottom box and found a color. And always make sure when you're done you always want to click the top box again because that puts you back in your primary color and not your secondary color, which you always want to be in your primary. So now we can drag the box back and now we can make our background. So you want to go over to the right and make a new layer again just at the bottom with a little plus and just click new. You can name it if you want to like background or something. I usually don't name my layers because I'm lazy but you know if you want to you can. So you can go over to the left now and select the little blue like many colors of blue tool and click that. Now at the top right here I'll zoom in on it there are many different types of gradients. So you can pick whichever one. I usually use the first one that makes it kind of like a line. You're just gonna drag your gradient and you can see you can adjust these little dots right here and make it more green or more purple or even if you want to. This gradient right here, the next one makes it reflected so purple will come back on the other side I believe like that. And then this one is sort of like a circle and a diamond. So stuff like that. So you guys can kind of experiment and see what type of gradient you like. I just use the first one normally to get like a solid color. And you're just going to drag the dots wherever you want them to make your background. So we're just going to do that. And I think that looks pretty good. So I am just going to go back to the little box selector tool and just click that. And there is our background. So now I am going to be loading my Roblox character render into this thumbnail. Now I know you might not be making a Roblox video so this might not apply to you. So you can really put whatever you want 
onto your thumbnail. If you want to make a Roblox character render, go to the top right corner of the screen, just click right there, and it'll give you a tutorial that I made on how to render your Roblox character. So now we are just going to go to layers at the very, very top. You're going to click that and click import from file right down here with the little yellow icon. Now with this, you can pretty much insert whatever you want to into your thumbnail, whatever picture. So I'm going to go to this file that has all the renders of my character from since I started my channel. So let's see, I'm probably just going to import this one. So as you can see, it made it bigger than the actual thumbnail size. So what we are going to do is just zoom out a little bit and take the bottom corner right here and just drag it with the little dots and try and resize it to where we can see the thumbnail is. So I'm just going to drag her down a little bit. So there we go. That's probably a good size. So now what we want to do to get the size back, this is why we made the colored layer so we can get the size of our thumbnail back without sort of messing up the shape. You are going to go on the left and select the magical wand. You are just going to go over, make sure to go to your layers and select the size one. So it's highlighted in blue and you are just going to click the middle of your thumbnail. So now all you need to do is go to the top where it says image and go to crop to selection and just click that. And now your thumbnail is back to the normal size. So you can zoom in with a little zoom in the very bottom right corner. And now we are back to size. So now, of course, you might want to add text to your thumbnail. So what you want to do is on the right again, we are going to click the little plus in the layers box and add a new layer. I'm going to title this one text since it is the text. So let's see. I'm going to show you guys like three or four of my favorite fonts for using for thumbnails. And also down in like the description, like I said before, with my downloads, all these fonts that I show in the video will be included just so you guys can download them. So let's see. Let me show you my favorite fonts. So here are four of my favorite fonts. I really love these ones. These are all the titles of the fonts, so that's how they'll show up in the zip file if you do download them. So I'm just going to X those out so let's see what do we want to make our video so i'm gonna pretend this thumbnail is for like making a blocksburg house so what i like to do is mix a lot of different fonts into it so it gives it kind of a variety so what we're gonna do is take let's see what font do we want we're gonna take thinking of betty and in the color box right here make sure to change the color to whatever color you want your text to be in this little white box right here. I changed it to white because I was typing text. So you can just make it whatever color you want. I just want white. So now we are going to just put that back where it goes and select the little text tool right here. So it's just right here on the left side in your toolbox and you're going to go down and select your font. You're going to select the size of the font that you want and we're just going to click and start typing. Also, make sure to have a um, text layer because I accidentally deleted it after I showed you guys all the fonts. So now we're going to type that again. M making my and we're just going to move it with this little blue arrow with the little compass tool. Move it wherever you want to. So I'm just going to put it right here and then just click off that and I'm going to color it now. Now I know you guys of course know that I color all my um letters so what i'm going to do is select the magic wand and then at the very top select the little two boxes that are together i'm just going to click that and click every single letter so i'm just going to click all of those so the whole thing is highlighted now what you're going to do is do the exact same thing as you made your background so you're going to take two colors you like together you're going to select the gradient tool and just i use the circle for this part but again you can use any option you want to and I'm just going to start in the center and make it go outward so it has like a subtle gradient. And then I am just going to click my little rectangle select tool, go back to the one box right here, and just click outside my picture. And there we go. Now this tool doesn't come with paint.net that I'm about to show you, but you guys can download it. It will also be included in the zip file in the description. You will just have to Google a tutorial on how to download it, a plugin on paint.net but it is really easy so i'm going to go to effects at the top object and then go to outline object now i'm going to use all these settings drag it to white as the color 
leave the softness where it is and just make the width however much I want it so I have an outline around my letters and I'm just gonna hit okay and then there are my letters so I'm really quick gonna make the rest of my letters for my thumbnail and I will be back in just a second Okay, so now that I have all my text done, I am going to go back to Effects, Object, and Outline Object, and I am going to drag the softness all the way up to 255. Now I'm going to make the color a darker color and try and make sort of like a shadow around my text just so it looks different and has a little shadow so i'm just gonna do that really quick and there we go i am also going to go to the pickles render layer in the layers box click that and then go to effects and hit repeat outline object so i'm just gonna click that so now all my objects have a little shadow on them so one thing i really like to add to my thumbnails are emojis because i feel like they add just a little bit more like decoration in them. So what I like to do is go into my browser and look up emojis. So what I have here are like shocked emojis. So you're just gonna click one. You want one that has a little checkered background because that means that they are transparent. So as you can see, it has like the little gray and white checkers in the background. So what you're gonna wanna do is right click this image and hit copy image. And you're just gonna go back into paint.net, make a new layer on top of all the other layers and hit control. V and then it'll paste in your little face so I'm just gonna rescale him to where I want him to go and you can drag him on the layers to put him behind the text or in front of the text so I think I'm gonna put him right here and then put him behind the text I am gonna unselect him really quick with a little rectangle select tool and then just repeat outline object again so I'm just gonna add a couple more emojis really quick with the same process and I'll be right back again all right, so now that I have all the emojis that I want, I am going to add a border to my thumbnail. So I'm going to make a new layer again and drag it on top of all the other layers. And I'm also going to make sure in my little color box that white is my primary color. So I'm just going to drag that back. So now we are going to go to the very, very bottom of the toolbox and select the shapes tool. And you are going to make sure rectangle is selected and you are just going to select the width that you want, I recommend about like 40 or 45, and you're just gonna drag it to make a square. You can change the border shape after you um, have already put it on your image. You're just gonna go to brush width and change it again. So I'm gonna make it 30, and after you are done, make sure to hit finish, or it might mess it up. So you're just gonna hit finish right there. And then I like to add a second one that's a little bit smaller. So I'm just gonna make one that's like five and put it right there. And there we go. Now really click at the top, I'm going to go to an effects and select repeat outline object again and just click that. And then over here on the layer, you are going to double click it. It's in the layers box over here. You're gonna double click it and select blending mode, multiply. So then it looks like this and I just drag it under everything else so it is sandwiched between my character but it is on top of the background right there. And now I have a border for my thumbnail. So the last thing I like to do is give it a little bit more color because everything, you know, just doesn't blend together very well. So what I like to do is make another layer and drag it on top of all the other layers. Now we're going to go to our color box and select two really dark colors. So I'm going to select like really dark green. As you can see, it's really light right here. So you're going to hit more and it'll open this big color box. And I'm just going to drag green down to like a dark color like that. Then I'm going to click the secondary color and make it sort of like a red or actually I'll make it a blue I think I want a blue make it really dark and you're just gonna hit less always make sure to click back on your primary color so we're gonna make sure it says primary and click the little green box to get there now we are going to go back to our gradient tool and make a gradient over the image so we're just gonna take it and put color all over the image you can use whatever type of gradient you want to and finally, we are going to double click the layer we just made this gradient on and select either additive or screen. And you can turn it down or leave it up if you want to. That's really your choice. Like this is too bright for me, so I'll turn it down a little bit. And as you can see, it gives my thumbnail a little bit more color. Here I'll show you this is with the gradient and this is without. So as you can see, it adds a little bit more color to bring it all together. So the last thing you wanna do after you're completely done with your thumbnail is save it. So you're gonna go to file at the top save as and you are just going to type whatever you want to save it as so i'm just going to name it 
thumbnail for Bloxburg. And before you save, at the very bottom, make sure where it says save as type, you select PNG because that's what YouTube takes for their images and just click save. Now you can just click OK on all these boxes to so just click OK here, flatten here. And there we go, now our thumbnail is completely saved and that is a complete tutorial on how I make thumbnails. I hope you guys enjoyed and please let me know down in the comments if you have any questions so I can help answer them for you. I hope this tutorial wasn't too confusing but this is pretty much the general way I do thumbnails. Make sure to leave a big thumbs up if this tutorial helped you and also share it with your friends if they need some help making thumbnails. But anyways, that's about all I have for you guys today. Just make sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you are new to get future notifications when I make tutorials, graphics videos, Roblox videos, and pretty much anything in between. But again, that's all I have for you guys today, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!